Hello my friends and channel subscribers, Greg here from Brisbane, Australia with another uncut, unedited, no war video. Today's video is uh, video number three, I think will be four parts, but it's number three about Electrolux Wall Q7 vacuum cleaner. The first video should pop up on top was about um, how I got to Electrolux and why I wanted to try something different, cheaper and I guess more affordable than Dyson. The second one was unboxing, should pop up as well up there and today I would like to talk about the first impressions. Mind you, I still will try to compare it to Dyson probably because I had Dyson for the last five years. My first Dyson was version 8, V8. The current Dyson I've got is version 11. And besides me comparing it to Dyson, I would like to emphasize that Dyson is an amazing vacuum cleaner. However, Dyson especially version 10, version 11, uh, so expensive. It's out of reach for many people. And with better technology, with better vacuum cleaner, with cheaper appliances, uh, there are cheaper versions for cordless vacuum cleaners that not competing with Dyson, but they're really good enough to maintain jobs that people need in their households and i think electrolux literally nailed it it is not dyson dyson feels better dyson more versatile more powerful but some things electrolux i believe does a little bit better not all of them some of them not as good but for price that you pay for electrolux i think it's an amazing vacuum cleaner and if you cannot afford Dyson, it's not cheap and nasty, but it's really good alternative to what others may consider as a, a gold standard for vacuum cleaners. So, without further ado, let's talk about this particular vacuum cleaner. Let's start with things that I don't like uh, and those are not necessarily bad things again. That's me comparing it to Dyson. What I don't like about it is how agile or how versatile, not versatile, I think it's how agile this vacuum cleaner is. So Dyson, the, the, the major difference between Dyson and Electrolux is that Dyson has a barrel at the, as a handle and then you've got tube and the bottom part is very flexible and independent. You can get to all places very easy and effortless. This vacuum build a little bit different. You've got your main vacuum cleaner at the bottom and the top is literally handled. So when you pick it up, and uh, I will comment on the stand as well, you literally have most of the weight of the vacuum cleaner is at the bottom. Well, it's really good when you're working on the floor when you start picking it up, it's a little bit more awkward and, 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 and not as doesn't feel as easy as, as, as Dyson. And I think while it weighs the same amount, uh, weighs the same, same, uh, same weight as, as a Dyson, because your vacuum cleaner weight down the bottom, you can actually feel this a little bit harder to, to vacuum. I'm, I'm, I believe I'm a stronger male and I do it easily. I think for all the people and the people that are not as strong, uh, vacuum with this vacuum cleaner won't be as easy as Dyson. But it's workable and it's in comparison with most of the corded vacuum cleaners. The second thing that I didn't like is uh, the bottom bit. Um, while it's moving freely, it still feels restricted compared of, uh, with what Dyson uh, did. Uh, and that's basically all. Would you believe that the vacuum cleaner that cost quarter price of the Dyson have only two things that I didn't quite like in comparison with much more 
uh, versatile vacuum cleaner. There's some things that are different, not necessarily bad or good. The way Dyson vacuums, it's the same approach of moving brush at the bottom and then you can speed up or slow down suction. While we can speed up and slow down suction here, the brush is a bit different here and it kind of scrubs a little bit better. Uh, that's what I like here. Also, I will just power, power for a second. I'm not sure if it will be, uh, you'll be able to see, but when you power it up, there's a light. It's something it does, Dyson doesn't have. And if you vacuum, um, even during the day, there are some not as well lit places. That light at the bottom, on the, at, at the brush, really helps you to see corners and things that you're reaching. I think it was Dyson's oversight, and this is the way Electrolux went quite well with what it is. Um, things that I do like in this vacuum cleaner, way better than Dyson, is the first one, and it's quite a strange one, but uh, I think they nailed it quite well. See that uh, piece at the bottom? That is your docking station. Dyson gives you docking station as well, but you, they, they kind of imply that you need to screw it on the wall or somewhere to hang your Dyson. And uh, people that live in rental properties not allowed to uh, uh, do anything with their walls. And this is where you've got your docking stations and all attachments from Dyson hanging everywhere and littering the place. With Electrolux, it's not very convenient uh, docking station, but you kind of slide it in and it stands. And this part of docking station is a charging station, so you don't need to plug it every time to the wall. You basically dock it and it charges well. I think it's a very well thought feature and I'm quite surprised that this expensive vacuum cleaner's Dyson don't have it. Right, so docking station is great, the uh, light is great. Another good thing about this vacuum cleaner, which Dyson also have, um, is that the middle part is actual vacuum cleaner itself. It detaches and then you put all attachments on top and you can do manual jobs around the place. That's kind of the same. What is not the same and it should go to category what I don't like this about this vacuum cleaner is how you empty the rubbish. So the first bit is quite uh, pretty good. You press the button and the whole barrel comes out. This is where things get a little bit not as well thought, I believe so. So to empty the dust, you need to squeeze the top two things and pull the filter out and when you pull it out, as you can see, it pulls out all the dust with it. Um, so, you know, now I've got a little bit of dust because I just emptied it, but I think that particular uh, part of this vacuum cleaner no, not well thought. So, it's not a big deal. I mean, like, you can get out and open it up about rub above a rubbish bin and empty it straight away. But with Dyson, it's very easy to empty it without littering place around you. So while I think it's quite all right, in comparison with Dyson, it's not as well thought. What is really good about this one is how attachments are stored and how they're used. With Dyson, all attachments, and they all a lot of them, they're really nice attachments, but they are kind of, you need to put them in the shop, you need to uh, store them somewhere. And they're all around the place, they're taking place here, they store attachment, attachments as a part of the frame. So if you turn the frame around, you've got an attachment here, which you withdraw, and then you mount that attachment onto main vacuum. You clip it in, and then you can clean things on top. I know. You turn the vacuum cleaner off, detach it, and put it back into your main compartment. So what I'm trying to say is, yes, this vacuum has an, a couple of attachments. Another attachment is right here. And 
the beauty of it is you've got only two parts so you stow everything in so for example you stow vacuum back into the frame right so frame has your bottom attachment which is brush for carpets and normal floors you got attachment for cleaning ceilings and windows and whatever and you've got little attachment here to uh, if you need a shorter reach for uh, to vacuum other things and it's all neatly done I really appreciated that Electrolux put thought into it. Now, oh, uh, that's my fault. Now, the battery life is a very interesting subject. I think I vacuumed only once and the battery life was uh, just alright to vacuum the whole place. And it's really hard to comment on the battery life. And the reason for that is my Dyson version 8 could not vacuum four bedrooms. I think after two and a half, maybe three bedrooms, uh, I was running out of battery. Uh, version 11 and version 11 Outreach, they have enough battery to vacuum most of the big houses. This vacuum cleaner is somewhere in between of Dyson version 8 and version 11 uh, in my case it was enough to vacuum the whole place and it did fantastic job and I hope battery will last uh, what I'm trying to say is I cannot compare it to Dyson because Dyson's every version uh, of vacuum cleaner has a different battery uh, management system it's really hard to say that this one is better or worse than Dyson but what I'm trying to say is when you pay that much money that you spend on this vacuum cleaner you cannot go wrong it vacuums well it's very versatile while it's not dyson it does fantastic job for what you pay for again that's only my opinion and uh, you may um, start with dyson as a cheaper version if you want uh, let's say version 6 would cost as much as this vacuum cleaner, but in my humble opinion This vacuum cleaner is better than Dyson version 6 uh, It's cheaper than Dyson version 8 and would be somewhere on par But different than version 8, but if you can afford buying Dyson, you cannot go wrong with it If you cannot afford buying, afford buying Dyson uh, Electrolux uh, Wall Q7 should be your second choice because that's amazing vacuum cleaner for price you pay thank you so much for watching this video if you like it please give it a thumbs up uh, also if you're not subscribed to the channel feel free to subscribe and let me know if you would like me to uh, film anything on a part four that i did not mention in part one two or three about electrolux wall q7 vacuum cleaner Thank you so much for watching, Greg from Brisbane, Australia, until next time.